I want to show you how to customize a multi-track session and save it as a template so you could open up that template later as a starting point for future multi-track sessions. Now to follow along, you don't need to have any files loaded up in Audition. I have this one file here because I'm going to use it to demonstrate a feature a little bit later. So we'll start with a clean slate. To do that, you go File, New, Multi-Track Session. That opens up the New Multi-Track Session dialog box. And I want to start with a simple template. Now we can go with this template called None, which is really the default template, or I can go with the template down here called Empty Stereo Session. Now that one would be better if there weren't a couple of flies in the ointment. The Empty Stereo Session is just a stereo master track, no other tracks. But you can see that the sample rate is set at 44.1 kilohertz, and the bit depth is 24 bits. And I don't want to have that. I want 32-bit floating point, and I want 48,000 hertz. So I'm not going to accept this one. I'm going to go back to None. And then I want 48,032 and stereo like that. So that's what we'll do. And we'll name this one Multi-Track Template. Although we don't have to name it that. I'm just going to do it for our purposes. And click OK. And that'll open up this empty multi-track session. You see there are six tracks. And the seventh track is the master track. First order of business when you're customizing a session is to change the names of the tracks. And you usually want the tracks names to match the files that you have here, or at least match the kind of thing you expect to put there. And since this is going to be an empty session, you're probably going to want to name some things that you would maybe record in a studio session or a live recording. So I'm going to change this one to vocal. Simply click on it and it turns blue. And when you have blue text, you can just cover it up by just typing. I'll call this one guitar. I want to do this to a few more tracks, so bear with me. I want to call this one bass. Scroll down a bit here. I want to have three different drum tracks. So we'll call this one OHL. You know how some drum trap sets have microphones above them, typically one to the left, one to the right. They're called overhead left and right. I'll call it overhead right. I'll name this last one here snare. There you go. Now you don't have to put a snare drum there. You don't have to put overhead mics there, but I'm just setting it up as if this was the plan. So now we have six tracks, but I want to add tracks. So to do that, there are two ways. You can use a context menu or you can use a keyboard shortcut. I'm going to use a context menu first. Wherever you want to put the track, you need to then select the track it's going to go above. So I'm going to select snare here and have the new track go above it. So I'm going to right click here inside this empty space. If I right click over here, nothing would happen. But if I right click over here, that opens up a context menu, meaning it's contextually sensitive to this particular spot. I want to click on track, or at least hover over track, and then select add stereo audio track. Now we're going to add a mono track later and show you the little, very, very small pitfall for doing that. But I'm going to go to stereo right now, and you typically add stereo tracks to a stereo session. Click on that, and there it is. Track 7 appears above the snare. I'm going to change this name to Tom Tom, let's say. And I really want to have this actually below the snare drum, so I'm going to just drag it down there. Notice that the header has two sets of little parallel lines, little dots that create two vertical parallel lines. When you hover your cursor over it, I'm going to go away, and then I hover over it, it turns into a little hand. It turns into a hand, that means that you can grab a hold of it and drag it. So I'm going to grab a hold of it now and click on it. You see my hand turns into a little fist, and now I'm going to start dragging. And there's no visual reference that tells you you're dragging, but when you get down a little ways, a little orange bar will appear saying you're going to put it here. So I just moved the tom-tom down below the snare, which is good. Now I want to put another track in, and this time I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut. And the keyboard shortcut is Alt-A for audio and Windows, and Option-A on Mac. And I'm going to select the master track. Hold on Alt-A. It added this new track. It did not come in above the master. It came in above tom-tom. I could change the name of that and do all the kind of stuff I just did, but in this case I'm going to delete it. So let me show you how to delete a track. Just right click in this empty area here, put on the track again, and then delete the selected track. Now it's gone. I want to add some bus tracks. I'm going to have the drums have their output go to a bus track. And I talk about how to do outputs and what are also called sends inside a separate tutorial, so I'm not going to really walk you through the process. I'm just going to do it really quickly here and then. You'll see how to do that in more detail later. So I'm going to right click here inside the master track and say track, add a stereo bus track. Now you always want to use stereo when you're working inside a stereo session when you're adding a bus track. When you're working just to add an audio track, if you're in a 5.1 session, you really should add a stereo track for all of your files. And 
only if you have a 5.1 track as an input source, then you would have a separate track for 5.1 file otherwise or all stereo. If you're working in mono, obviously you work only in mono. But when we're talking about adding a bus track, the bus track should match the session that we're working on. So I'm going to add a stereo bus track. Of course, it won't go directly above the master track as I would like. It goes above the tom tom. So I'm going to drag it down. So that's really where it belongs. Change its name to drums just to get that set up. And now here I'm just adding tracks and changing names, but you can also do the whole output setup and the send setup, and that will be remembered. Because when you create a template, you're actually creating just a saved session. You've been working with saved sessions all throughout these tutorials. You open up a session, you see all these files load up, and the tracks might be named, and they might be panned left and right, or the volume might be changed. All that stuff is stored inside a saved session. Well, a template that we're going to make here is just a saved session that is stored in a template folder. And then there's a little marker also that when you save it to, as a template, then Audition remembers that it's a template and then displays that in the template dropdown list. So we can do all kinds of things to get it ready. And whatever we do here will show up in that template. So I'm going to add this bus here. I'm going to output some things to that bus. So to output something, I'd use this line here where the arrow's pointing to the left. I click this little disclosure triangle and say, send this thing, or actually output this thing to the drums bus. And I'm going to do that for these other guys as well. Output this thing to the drums bus. We'll do two more. Output to the drums bus. And I'll do that last drum down here, the time time. Output that to the drums bus. And then if I wanted to add an effect to the drums track, I could switch over to the effects view and add an effect like a compression, for example. Let's just add the multi-band compression. And I could choose a preset or something like that, like drums. Close that, and now all those drums will be routed through this output, via their output, to this bus, and the bus then is routed to the master track. So we've now set that up with an effect, and when we save the template, that effect will be saved in that template. Let's add one more bus track. I'm going to right-click here, go Track, add a stereo bus track. This one we're going to name Headset, and this time I don't want to I send an output to that. I want to send what are called sends to it so that the vocalist, when he or she is recording their vocal, they can hear the output from, let's say, these two tracks here. So I click on this little sends button. I have the send one go to the headset. Down here, the send one go to the headset so that the vocalist can hear the guitar and the bass while that person is recording their vocal without actually having that guitar or bass bleed into the vocal and have that recorded with the vocal as well. So now we've got those guys all set up. And then finally, I might want to set some panning here within the track. Let me just show you how to do that within a track. I'm going to want to have, let's say, the drums be a little bit left and right. So I can pan this one left by dragging it to the left a little bit, like the left 20. Drag this one to the right a little bit, like that. That's how you can do an entire track. And then I might want to adjust the volume level. Even though I don't have any clips in here, I might want to adjust the volume level down here just in anticipation of what the level will be when I bring it in. It's also possible to remember these volume level changes. And then finally, I want to show you what happens if you bring in a monaural track inside a stereo session. I'm going to right click here and bring in a monaural track. I'm going to go track, add a mono audio track. Now I want you to notice what happens when I add a file to that track. Here's a guitar file there. I'm going to add a guitar file right below it. It doesn't have to be on the guitar track. I'm just doing that for convenience. I want you to notice something. In this stereo track, and you can tell it's a stereo track because there's two little boxes there showing the left and right channels, you see a little blue line here inside the clip. That's a panning envelope. If you scroll up a little bit and look at the clip in the mono track, there is no panning envelope inside the clip, which means you cannot keyframe left and right pan in the clip itself, whereas down here you can. But all is not lost. You can still, even in a mono track, you can still pan the mono track by clicking this drop down disclosure triangle there, it's showing the envelopes. And you can say, okay, which envelopes do I want to see disclosed here? I want to see the pan envelope as well as the volume. Now there is a pan envelope for the entire track. So for example, back down here in the clip, I can say, okay, I want to pan the sky all the way left, and then put on a keyframe there, and then pan it all the way right. I'll solo that track so you can see how that goes. If you have a headset on, it should go left to right here, like that. And if I do the same thing up here, you know, I don't have the option inside the clip, but I do have the option inside the track. So I click on there, add a keyframe, bring it way up to the top, click right next to it, add a keyframe on the bottom, and I can get the same effect. It's just that it's not within the clip, so it's sort of an extra step to open up this envelope to do that effect. So you see how that goes left to right like that.
So those are the ways that you can set up, customize, and change a multi-track session. And we could call it a day here. You could do your work now and add some clips and add some effects and things like that. But what I want to do is take one more step and save this as a template. Now, when you save a template, you're just saving a multi-track session file, the so-called .sexs file. But you're saving it in a special location, and when you save it, Audition then also creates a little trigger that saves this inside the template dropdown. So when you save it as a multi-track session file, it saves everything in it, including these files. So I don't really want these files in the template, although sometimes people do save files in a template because they know they're going to have, let's say, a music bed over which they're going to put a voiceover, and they're just going to change the voiceover every time. So you do save it with the music bed already in it. In this case, we're going to delete these two clips. I'll close this thing too, and not that we don't have to have it closed, but I will. Save that as well. Get rid of that. I do recognize that I did change the keyframes here, so I better undo those. So I'm going to drag them away. That. Drag this one away. So now everything's back to normal again. Let me close that. So now I want to save this whole thing as a template with all the buses and the sends and the outputs, everything changed like that, and the names. Get rid of this track. I'll right click on it and delete it. That way we're all cleaned up and ready to go. And now to save a template, you'd think probably you'd go to multi track session and find something like save template, but it's not there. And you think otherwise maybe it might be inside this new multi track session folder where there might be a button for you to click on over here to save it, but there's not. So the place where you do save a multi-track session is kind of counterintuitive. It's under the File menu, File, Export, Export Session as Template. You may sort of forget how you can save a template, but this is the sort of convoluted route you take to save a multi-track session as a template. File, Export, Session as Template. That opens up this dialog box which asks for a name and a location. Let me close this for a second and show you the default location. The default location is set inside Preferences. So go Edit, or Adobe Audition Preferences, go down to the Media and Disk Cache section, and here's where the templates are located. And they're stored there by default when you install Audition. If you decide to change the location, you can. Just make sure you bring along all the templates when you change the location. Nevertheless, it will look for that default location when you do try to save a template. So go File, Export, Session as Template. You can give it a name. I think I'll just give this one Jeff's Template. And whether you include the markers or not, it's not really important because we don't have any markers or metadata in there, but we'll just keep that checked. I'll click OK. And now we have saved the template. And it's immediately available, which is kind of cool. You don't have to like close Audition and come back to it. Now you can go to File, New, Multi-Track Session. Go to this drop-down list, and there is the new template that we just made. So folks, that is the basic process to customize a multi-track session. And you can leave it at that. You can do your customization, do your work, and save the session and go on from there. But if this is the kind of session setup that you're going to use over and over again, at least as a starting point, which you can customize later if you want to, then make a template. And making a template, as you can see, is a very straightforward process.